UTL file der migration. What do I mean by UTL file der? Well, this is the question that came in. We read and write a lot of files in our database, and they do it with the UTL file built-in package. They do it to a complex folder subsystem, and to manage that or to allow that in their existing database, they've simply set the initialization parameter UTL file der equals asterisk. Now we're getting ready to upgrade to 19C and UTL file der is de-supported. What are our options? For those that are new to the database, when UTL file the package first came out, UTL file der was a parameter you set and you simply set, put a list of directories that you were allowed to write to. It was a way of controlling and securing uh, the database server because obviously it's a fairly precious resource. However, we did allow wildcards and what people would do is because you needed to bounce the database to change UTL file der, that upset people. They said, let's just solve the problem once and for all. And they set UTL file der equals star, which means you can write anywhere. This customer is migrating to 8 to 19C, but I should stress that it literally is from 18C onwards. You cannot use UTL file der in any way, shape or form as an initialization parameter. It also means that the directory parameter that goes into many of the UTL file packages, UTL file open, close, etc., must be a directory object done with the create directory command, not a explicit file path. Before you jump on the, on the, the chat line or, or Twitter and saying, you know, it was you know, damn Oracle, why did they take away such a useful thing? Let's explain why UTL file der equals asterisk was a really bad idea. UTL file package runs as PL SQL, which means it's running as the Oracle user inside your database, which means it has the same OS permissions as the Oracle user inside the database. So if you were, well, as <laughs> maliciously minded as I tend to be, you could write yourself a little script like this. We loop through doing some sort of interesting regular expressions against V$ data file. And with each row that comes out of that cursor, I do a util file der file open. File open in write mode means whatever is there, erase it and initialize it with a file of zero size. Now, what is the output from that actual SQL cursor I've got there? It's this. Using some regular expressions, I'm simply getting the path name and then the file name to use as directory and file for each of my data files in my database. I ordered by file number descending because that way I'll simply loop through all the user data files and I'll open them with a UTL file open, which means erase them and set them to zero bytes. There's a good chance that'll keep on going because the last one I do will be the system table space. And at the end of that, my database well, is remarkably efficient because it's no longer <laughs> of any bytes in size, but all my data is gone. This is the kind of exposure you were at the moment you get UCL file der equals star. Even if someone couldn't query V$ data file, if they could take some intelligent guesses as to what critical files might be on the system that are owned by Oracle, they could literally just hose your system. Let's face it, most of us use the OFA standard for our Oracle software installations. So it wouldn't take a hacker or anyone malicious inside your organization long to think, well, what I can do is I can simply take a guess as to it's probably under slash uo1 slash app slash oracle, etc., and wipe out the Oracle executable. So UTL file der equals star was always just a catastrophic idea. What I'm suggesting is if you don't want to have to re-architect your application because it's got heaps and heaps of calls to explicit file paths, you can introduce an interception layer. And here's a little package I thought I'd simply walk through, and I'll put this out of my GitHub account so anyone that wants to use it can do it. Let me do a new share. I call it this? I hope so. So here's our existing customer. This is our, their current predicament. This is what they used to be able to do. They could connect as their normal user, and this is the kind of flexibility they used to have. I could simply say, yep, just go to any particular folder that I have existing on my system, open up a brand new file there, and write to it. You can see I haven't actually run this because while that will work fine in versions before 18C, where I've set util file to equal star, the moment I try to in a current release, I get invalid directory object because the first parameter can no longer be an operating system path. It must be a directory object. So the challenge here is how can I keep this code looking as close as it can to this, as we see here, where I'm simply freely using 
file names or file paths. So I don't have to refactor all my application while I'm still restricted by using directory objects. So I'm going to connect now as a DBA user, which is me in this case, but effectively a administrative user. I'm going to create a function called UTL file dir. It's effectively a uh, drop in replacement for my UTL file dir parameter. And this is what it's going to do. You'll pass in an actual operating system directory, just like you had before, x colon, or you know, in, on Unix, it will be slash something, slash something, slash something else. You'll simply drop it in. What we're going to do is effectively is have a little bit of playing around with this to see if we can find an existing directory object that matches to it. If the thing they pass in has no delimiter whatsoever, it, uh, it probably means we're actually passing in an already a directory object, and that's part of the, what this thing will handle. If I can't, what we're going to do is actually dynamically create a directory object on the database based on the operating system path name they've passed in. I, I had just a, a quick run at this. So, for example, in this case, if you actually had two different folders, you app Oracle and you app Oracle with, say, a dash in it, they would, in my code here, that would map to the same name and you would get a, a bit of a problem. So it's designed to handle the basic cases, but you would obviously take this and make it as robust as required for your system. But what's going to happen is if you pass in something like you app 01 Oracle, I'm going to dynamically create a directory object which looks like u01 underscore app underscore Oracle. And I'm going to add a bit of hash at the end just to hopefully keep it as unique as possible. So sort of other directory paths come in that are very similar uh, in, in terms of an operating system path, uh, the hash function will be just enough to actually make it unique throughout. Because directory names are obviously limited to just 128 characters as a database object, whereas operating system path names could be far more. So here's the sort of little bit of you know, regular expression to try to turn a operating system path into a directory object name, add a little bit of hash function as well to see how we go, and then add it pops out. I've also put in here is it was sort of somewhere in here, we would perhaps, let me scroll back a bit. Somewhere in here, you could actually add some sanity checks. So in the same way that we don't want anyone with util file dir equals asterisk actually passing in data file names, et cetera, because we're adding an interception layer, in this code here, we will do extra checks, things like, are you going against the software distribution? Are you going against, for example, the audit directories? Are you going against the data files, et cetera? So we could do extra checks, checks here, but there's our function. Now I can create, execute on that function back to my normal user called Scott. Now what I'm going to do with Scott is actually create his own copy of the standard UTL file package. So the package header is literally straight out of DBA source. So I'm simply copying my creating in my Scott schema my own version of UTL file package. And the package spec is literally exactly the same as what you had in the system version. It's just a wrapper around it. So there's nothing different here. That's the, the entire package, literally a one for one copy of what was in the sys schema. The package body is where things are going to change. Now, obviously, I don't want to re-implement UTL file from scratch. All I'm really going to be doing is doing calls to the standard UTL file package. If open, rather than just passing in the directory, the location that you gave me, what I do is I take your location and put it through my UTL file function. So if you pass in me an operating system path, this will either return an existing directory object that maps to it, or dynamically create one and then return it anyway. And then we just go ahead and call standard UTL file. And in fact, anywhere in this UTL file version where I need to reference a directory, for example, file open nchar, I'll simply intercept it with my own function here, which maps operating systems to real directories. If it doesn't, if I don't need to reference the directory, I simply call UTL file in the normal way. And so the rest of it is pretty much wherever I have a location or a directory inside Oracle, I intercept it so I can convert it to a directory object. Otherwise, I just ignore it and just call sysutl file anyway. Now when I call my original piece of code, which still looks like it's referencing operating system paths, it looks exactly like the previous code, which worked out of the box in version 11, version 12. It now runs. And just to prove it, if I actually check what happened here, it said, yes, you tried to reference a directory path called this. I dynamically created a directory called xtemp file data with a hash at the end. 
and we can actually check that that actually folder on that on, on this PC here. We did successfully create a thing called emp.dat, and there's the content. So it can be done. That's a nice way of actually having your existing code base, almost no changes required because we are dynamically intercepting your usage of operating system paths and mapping them to directory objects. One of the things I did was in here was I could also extend this. So for example, I could do things like if someone actually tries to pass in um, effectively a directory object directly, I could, you know, I could simply return it as opposed to raising an error. I suppose the point I wanted to put here is you can put whatever you want into this interception package. As I said, you could do extra validation checks. You could add auditing. You know, why, why are people using these particular parts? I could add exceptions where I simply say, okay, from now on, I need you to start using directory objects. Otherwise, I'm going to start giving errors. So it's a way of slowly letting people refactor their code to being directory objects. And the whole time, you're not having to you know, do a big bang refactoring of all your code, but you still get access to whatever complex subfolders and structures you want. So that's the interception layer, which I think is a cool idea for letting people continue their existing code base, but also get the added security of moving to directory objects. And as I said, you can augment it, add it in any way, shape or form. Uh, I'll put the source code for that. I think it's already out there on my GitHub account, so feel free to grab it. As always, anything on my personal GitHub is you know, use at your own risk, but I had a bit of a play with it. It seems to work pretty well, and hopefully it helps you ease that migration from pre-19C to 19C for that long-term support without having to rewrite lots of your code. And as I said, you get the bonus of much, much better security and data protection in your database.